Today, I'm gonna to tell you why Blazor and WebAssembly is the future of web development. Hey, if you're new to the channel, my name is Bobby Davis. I'm the CEO and founder of Coder Foundry. And if you're liking our content, please give us a like and a subscribe and hit notifications for all of our future great content. But we're here today to talk about the future of web development, which I think is WebAssembly specifically I think um, one of the big players in that is gonna be Blazor. Now, if you watch Microsoft and you watch what they do, specifically last week, they had the .NET conference and they called it .NET Conf. If you just looked at the sheer number of presentations centered around Blazor, and if you've watched Microsoft long enough, you realize like, okay, they're trying to tell us that this is the future of web development without coming out and right out saying it, that this is the future. And the reason they don't do that is because People will panic and they'll, they'll feel like their technology is being deprecated or the way they do it is now obsolete and they'll, they'll be mad at them for doing that. So they've learned over the years not to drop bombshells on you. Instead, slowly introduce you to these new technologies and also in the meantime, work with their corporate partners and saying, hey, Blazor is the way we're going to build these next generation of web applications. Now, a lot of the conferences and a lot of the conference um, presentations I saw, they some of them showed roadmaps. And they were talking about the roadmap from taking a current legacy project and what should I target for the next project? Because Microsoft has ASP.NET, NBC, ASP.NET Razor pages. They have Blazor WebAssembly. They have Blazor Server. And people are asking questions. If I got a brand new project, what should I do it? And this is what is telling about where Microsoft is sending you is they're saying the roadmap from your legacy web forms project is Blazor. And so what you'll see in the next year is that their documentation will increasingly show more and more about Blazor, how to do this with Blazor, um, the different techniques that you need to use, and then the other technologies will take a back seat. Now, you may be asking yourself the question, exactly what is Blazor? Now, Blazor is a technology developed by Microsoft that implements something called WebAssembly. Now, at a high level, WebAssembly allows us to run code at near native speeds in all the browsers. In fact, WebAssembly is an adopted standard of web development. So we have JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and now we have WebAssembly as that standard. And Blazor is implementation so that we can write C-sharp code that executes in the browser, in all modern browser, browsers, including mobile browsers. And so WebAssembly is gonna give us a feature that we, we haven't really had before on the web, which is near native speed, which allows us to build applications that before weren't entirely possible using something like pure JavaScript and HTML and CSS. Also, what Blazor does is allows us to build rich, these kind of rich responsive websites that don't require a post back. So when you look at the way that Microsoft has built things in the past with ASP.NET, that required us to post the entire form back to the server, and then those results are sent back to the view. With the implementation of things like React and Angular, binding each particular element back to the, so you don't have to post back the entire page, you can just get a reach out and just get that element bound to the front. Blazor now allows us to do something very similar where we have a similar front end technology like JavaScript, but now we can write that in C-sharp. Now, a lot of people think that, oh, it's the death of JavaScript, or now I can get rid of JavaScript and I can just write my things in C-sharp. And that's not exactly why I'm excited about it. It is cool that I can use C-sharp classes and methods and all those kind of stuff on my front end. But the thing that's more exciting is that it runs at near native speed in the browser itself. Learning to code can be stressful and hard, and that's why I was proud to write the book, Breaking the Code, that gives you those five essential steps to landing that first software job. Pick up your copy today at Amazon or any other major outlet. So let's talk a little bit further about what Microsoft, I believe Microsoft plans are. Now, if you've watched Microsoft a lot, they don't always come out and say definitively, this is the way it's gonna be, because again, they don't want to um, scare a lot of their customers or um, cause people to just switch stacks to something else and say Microsoft's not committed to the stack that we're on. But if you pay real close attention to the .NET 5 rollout, the first thing that should 
stand out to you as a web developer is web forms is not being brought to .NET 5. And then when they're saying, hey, I'm going to rewrite my web forms app, what should I do? They're recommending that you do that with Blazor, which means when you look at 2021 and corporate budgets and people rewriting apps, uh, they're going to target Blazor and ASP.NET, NBC or Razor Pages, one of those, those three technologies. Now, you may be asking yourself a question like, OK, what if I've got an ASP.NET NBC app that's written in .NET 4.8? probably are going to still use ASP.NET MVC. But if you don't want to kind of like take your current code base and kind of convert it over, um, and then maybe Blazor will be um, a target that you want to look into because it does bring some extra flavor or extra capabilities to your project that you currently don't get with a post back. Now, the other thing that was deprecated in .NET 5 was VB. And so VB or Visual Basic.NET is what they're going to call feature complete. Now, I'm not saying that VB is dead, but what they are saying is they're no longer going to have language enhancements to VB. In other words, what VB does today is all it's ever going to do. And all of those enhancements and all of those capabilities that they're building into languages will go into languages like C Sharp and also F Sharp. But when you look at C Sharp as a language, it is continually being evolved and continually being pushed into lots of, um, of workloads. And those include Blazor. Now, before you think about like, hey, you know, this is a brand new thing. I'm a student. Should I learn Blazor today? And what I'm going to say is if you know one thing and you can only pick one thing to get a job right now or in the next 90 days of this recording, I still think that technology that you should learn is ASP.NET, MVC or Razor Pages because um, that's still where a lot of the work's going to be at. And there's going to be some legacy ASP.NET projects that won't convert to Blazor next year. Obviously, they've got like 10,000 lines of code in their project. Um, they're not going to rewrite it this year. But if you're out there coding right now today and you're already working as a dev, you need to pay attention to um, Blazor is because I think it's going to give you a lot of opportunities for projects that you normally wouldn't get because you know how to do it. Now, one of the things that I like to talk about a lot um, with a lot of people is when I see a shift in the marketplace, we try to jump on those shifts. Um, and so what you're seeing with WebAssembly is that shift is happening to where Blazor being probably what I think the best implementation of Web, uh, WebAssembly right now from the tooling aspect, from just the sheer amount of uh, effort they're putting into it and the amount of like technology and people behind it in Microsoft that's going to push this out in the marketplace. Blazor is probably the best bet on WebAssembly right now, but there's some other languages that you could look into. Either way, I think what you're seeing in the shift is that WebAssembly is going to be the primary way that we develop um, these bigger web applications going forward. Hey, if all this talk about Blazor has you interested, just remember you can go to coderfrowny.com slash apply. We'd love to be your teacher, your coach, or your mentor to get you that first software job. So if you're interested in our bootcamp, go to coderfrowny.com slash apply. Hey, I hope this helps. Good luck and keep coding.